it's kind of a nice story. Have I got a few minutes left to tell another quick story? You interested in one more? <laughs> okay. Uh, <clears throat> that's a photo of Colonel John Tomhave, who is the, the, the commander of the 485th Bomb Group, the group that my dad was in. <clears throat> His crew was shot down over northern Italy on February 16, 1945. My dad saw the plane go down. He was on that mission. It got hit and crashed into another plane. They both went down. He said nobody got out of the plane. He said, I watched it against a snowy backdrop. <clears throat> I didn't see anybody get out. <clears throat> <clears throat> well, the rumors surfaced that the navigator that day, who was Olin Cooper Bryant <clears throat> uh, had been blown out of the plane and his parachute didn't completely open, but he survived. <clears throat> As I wanted to write the story, I asked my dad, and he goes, nah. He said, I saw the plane, I saw him crash. I didn't see any parachutes. Well, it turned out a few did get out from both planes. <clears throat> and so, I wanted to include that story in my book, but I wanted to make sure it was a true story, you know? And so I wrote a letter. I thought I found his family. I found his wife and wrote her a letter. And she called me and she goes, you got the story all wrong. I go, what do you mean? She goes, the story about his parachute partly opening. You got the right guy, but that story isn't right. I go, what do you mean? She goes, he wasn't wearing a parachute. Really? <clears throat> And I said, well, I'd like to include the story. I'd have to heavily footnote it in my book. She said, well, he never wanted the story told. He was in a, in a hospital in northern Italy that the Germans had, with mainly German soldiers, <clears throat> and he felt like he was the luckiest man in the world. And Collier's Magazine came to interview him when he got home in the summer after being released and wanted to tell the story, and his story to them, or what he told them was, I appreciate you folks coming to see me here. But he said, I'm no hero, all I did was live. And I think it'd be better if you'd tell the stories of some real heroes, and I'll give you the names of some. So he wouldn't tell them the story, which made it more credible in my opinion. <clears throat> so, um, in talking <clears throat> to his wife, she said, my son wants to talk to you. So our son called me and he goes, how much are you making off this story? I said, well, probably nothing. I, I'm probably going to lose money because I'm, I'm footing the bill out of my own pocket. <clears throat> and he goes, well, this guy named Stephen Ambrose, if you've heard of him, he's a really well-known historian, <clears throat> wants the book uh, or wants the story for a book he's writing about the 15th Air Force out of Italy. <clears throat> and I said, well, you ought to give the story to him because everybody's going to read his book. Maybe nobody will read mine. And he goes, well, my, if my dad wanted the story told, he'd want somebody like you to tell it. It's got a connection. <clears throat> so I said, but still, did he tell you the story? He goes, well, about six months before he died of emphysema, we sat him down at Christmas. He agreed to tell the story, and we videotaped it. And he said, we haven't released that to anybody, but I'll send you a copy. As long as you don't release it, you can use the information, but don't give it to anybody else. So I agreed to that. <clears throat> and so I still, in the first edition of my book, I had to put note it heavily, right? I mean, it's him telling the story. <clears throat> uh, then I, this Italian contacted me that found the crash, crash site, high in the mountains. <clears throat> uh, uh, in the mountain on Mount Bellapite, which is north of Gemona, Italy, which is uh, at the base of that mountain, there's a little village of Chusaforte. The village, the village priest had noted it in his record that a bomber had crashed and one airman came, fell without a parachute, badly injured. Well, again, is that third hand information? <coughs> So then I get called by a guy by the name of Walter Fergus. Walter was on one of the planes. He was on Colonel Tom Hayes' plane, and the tail got sheared off by when they had the mid-air collision. <clears throat> so
So he was on that same plane, plane as Major Bryant. So he gets shot down. He's out in the middle of nowhere on the side of this mountain. He said the snow was four to feet high. He had it in most places. <clears throat> and he said he got captured, the Germans captured him and took him to this little sheep herder's hut and there was a badly injured airman who was, who was bleeding from his nose and his ears and was just moaning all night long. He said, I don't know who he was, but he had high rank, so he was probably on my plane, but I never, you know, I was just flying as a gunner. <clears throat> so the story got a little bit more. Then I get a call from Earl Beatty, who was on the other plane. And Earl tells me he, he wanted to buy a copy of my book he'd heard about. It. His grandson told him. I said, well, your name sounds kind of familiar. And he goes, well, I was shot down on the 16th of February. Okay. <clears throat> and I said, tell me about it. He goes, well, I was shot down. He says, here I am, a Boy Scout, and I'm looking for directions and stuff. I'm on top of a mountain above the tree line. There's no moss growing, so you can tell which side of the tree the moss is on. There's nothing. And he says, so I'm trudging through the snow and I see what looks like a leather map case or something. And he says, here, the, you know, snow. He says, why would there be a map case unless it came out of a plane? So he says, I go to dig it out. And it's a flying helmet and there's a head in it. And he said, and the head kind of rears back as I'm digging it out in this, uh, a moaning thing. <clears throat> and he says, it's this airman. He must have been on the other plane. He was a, a major. His name might have been something like Barnett from the thing, but I, I never knew the guy. So he said, I dug him out of the snow and I put him in my parachute. And he said, the darndest thing happened. He didn't have a parachute. So there's the proof. And so I was able to include that. Uh, and I felt good about that. Uh, there's another picture of the mountain. <clears throat> and there's some of the people, the, the guy second from the left is the guy who found the crash site originally, and that's me on one of my trips there with different pieces of wreckage out of the airplane and some of the investigators. So, yeah. And this is one picture from that first story that's out of order. The grandson and the granddaughter of that airman uh, at the uh, memorial ceremony, at the burial ceremony. Okay, any questions or comments? Thank you for sharing the story. Yeah. That's, that's amazing. Yeah.